They are outlaws, old school bandits. Whenever we went anywhere, people moved out of our way. They were scared. Put it this way, yeah, we bad. They're the most violent motorcycle gang in the West. You're in the sun, you're You're not nice to people. It's the way we are. These gangsters have one true enemy, the law. Everywhere I would go, I was being followed. Now, the Sons of Silence are uniting in rebellion. If we all joined forces, every club, every chapter in the nation, they'd have to bring in the army to cool us down. Colorado Springs, Colorado. This is a military town, home to the Air Force Academy and the Army's Fort Carson. It's clean, green, and beautiful. In 2006, Money Magazine named Colorado Springs America's best place to live. But amid the beauty is the outlaw motorcycle gang, the Sons of Silence. There were too many times that I've seen people come up and uh, get in brothers' faces and say, you guys think you're tough, don't you? Wrong thing to say. I didn't wonder why they got beat up. The Sons are one percenters, a criminal brotherhood that's proud of its outlaw image. They do not follow society's laws. Types of crimes that the Sons of Silence are involved in over the years has ranged from murder, burglaries, robberies, drug dealing, gun dealing, prostitution, you name it, they've been involved in it. It's all fun one-on-one -on -one until you swing in the sun. Nick Nichols, an Army veteran, rode with the Suns for a decade. Growing up, he was constantly moving, so Nichols was drawn to the gang for its stability and sense of family. It looked like the guys were close, like there was a brotherhood, like they would do anything for each other. When Nichols first joined in 1988, it was because he liked drugs, liked to party, and he liked easy women. The girls I liked were dancers. The reason I like dancers is you got to see what was in a package before you ever got it home. Big Larry asked to have his identity concealed. Whenever somebody does not get out of our way, we will them up all the time. Big Larry is a longtime member of the Sons of Silence. He won't reveal when he first joined, but admits that originally he considered it a stepping stone. I wanted to be a Hell's Angel. I figured to get into one club, work my way up. When he became a son, however, he lost interest in being anything else. Why go to that level? Because we're there now. Our time is coming up. They have 36 chapters worldwide, but the majority of their members live in the western U.S. The Sons are one of the fastest growing motorcycle gangs in the world. Colorado, Iowa, Minnesota, Indianapolis, Illinois, anywhere. Where our territory is, is us. Us only. We will try to take over. That's what we do. They are pathologically anti-authoritarian. Beat their ass in the home like a little girl. The sons are known to traffic in weapons, stolen bike parts, and drugs. The main drug of choice in the club is speed. There were times when I was awake for three or four days at a shot. We sell a lot of cocaine, but our drug that we sell most of is crystal meth, because that is our money. The 
sons are careful to keep their criminal activities separate from club business. A lot of brothers are pretty secretive about what they got going on. They could be involved. I'm by myself. That way I know who's going to snitch on me. They learned this lesson the hard way in the late 1990s when they were infiltrated by the ATF. I had a gift for gab, you might say, and I wanted to use that. Blake Bodler asked to have his identity concealed. In 1997, this ATF undercover agent was transferred to Colorado Springs. He was young and eager to take on a challenging case. The one group that stood out as being the criminal element in Colorado Springs was the Sons of Silence Motorcycle Club. They had a reputation for violence, and many of the potential informants I spoke to referred to them as the Sons of Violence instead of the Sons of Silence. Jim Waddles, then a detective with the Denver Police Department, had been tracking the Sons of Silence for years. If I didn't know who a guy was, I'd walk up, hey, I'm Jim Waddles from Denver Police Department, what's your name? Waddles operated in the open. They always saw him coming. I says, would you rather have me standing here in front of you or sitting across the street watching you in binoculars waiting for you to do something stupid? The Sons have a severe code of secrecy. Developing informants within the club was extremely difficult. Blake was the answer to the problem. Well, so you go in, in what we would call a cold call situation. You don't have an informant or anyone else vouching for you uh, that you're a good guy as far as the criminal world goes. So you have to go in there and earn your own stripes. Blake started calling himself Bo and began hanging out at the biker bars around town. He was invited to a Sons of Silence party at the gang's clubhouse. Things were going well until he made a mistake. His first party was going very well up until the time that I observed uh, a hang around to retrieve a gun from behind the bar. And I told that hang around, I said, that's a nice gun. Let me know if you ever want to sell it. Blake was a stranger trying to illegally buy a gun, and the sons were on to his game. A few minutes later, he called me out front, and at that time I was confronted by two Sons of Silence members. They took him outside the clubhouse, pushed Blake into the shadows, and began interrogating him. And they wanted to know who I was, what I was about, why I was there. He was gonna get his butt kicked that night. Blake insisted he was just trying to party, but the sons weren't buying it. I knew when he said, get out of here, leave, he wanted me to leave the property. The agent knew that if he let the gang chase him off now, he might never get another chance. So he took yet another risk. I saw an opportunity to go back into the bar and maybe mend some fences. And that's the route I chose to do. The club's enforcer immediately took notice. A few minutes later, Frank Pearson, who was an enforcer for the club, came back into the bar and he saw me sitting there. And he came walking up to me and he said, what are you doing here? Blake had to think fast. And I said, well, got out of his side. Can I buy you a drink? And Frank looked at me for a couple of seconds and then he said, yeah, buy me a drink. So in a way, Frank admired 